and smiled at the memory. Good sex always got her in the mood for an op. Her skin tingled and her heart raced and she couldn't wait to see what happened. Being a cop was the most fun she ever had, except of course when she was in bed with Dellen Mitchell. She headed back out to the bar, ordered a gin and tonic, extra lime and not much ice, and put her back to the bar to watch the room. Not too crowded yet, just the usual mix of drug dealers, bikers, a couple of working girls, and here are there a few guys in two clean tees and brand name jeans who didn't quite fit the place. Not tourists or college boys looking to score drugs or girls, but not lowlifes either. Those are the ones who interested her. What were they doing there? She didn't see who she was looking for, but she tended to be lucky and patient. Hell, she was inside, warm and dry, and not working on her back. She could wait forever at this rate. So she nursed her drink and made sure anyone looking in her direction saw a street girl who wasn't quite ready to start earning her nightly wage. In the meantime, she found a little eye candy to take the edge off the waiting. At the far end of the bar, Mitch was talking up a young, very pretty black woman in a silver spangled halter top that barely covered her nipples. In jeans cut so low, her ass crack showed. <laughs> the girl was leaning over so far, Mitch probably could have stuck his tongue down between her tits. Sandy thought that was hot. The girl looked light at the looks of Mitch, too. She had her hand on his arm, and he was laughing. Yep, definitely hot. Sandy angled a bit more so she could keep an eye on the door and watch them out of the corner of her eye. Ten minutes later, the blonde from the photo came through the door. Quickly, Sandy turned her back to the room, leaned on the bar, and showed a little cleavage of her own. The bartender, a muscle-bound white dude without much hair, who made up for it with such a large bulge in his pants she wondered if it was real, he strolled over, leaned his elbow on the bar, and looked down her shirt. I know you don't, I, he said. How original. <laughs> Not the way you're thinking. Sandy smiled at him and watched the blonde do a quick circuit of the room and come over to the bar to get a drink. How do you know what I'm thinking, he said, in what he thought was probably a low, sexy voice. Well, I can sort of tell from the way you're looking at my tits. He laughed. Hey, they baby, if you're not doing anything later, have to check my list. She laughed, and he good-naturedly winked and moved down the bar to take the blonde's order. Sandy turned casually, cocked her head, and said, hey, do you remember me, to the girl. The blonde didn't answer for a second, as if she wasn't sure Sandy was talking to her. Finally, she looked over at her, a disinterested, disinterested smirk on her face, and said, I think you got the wrong girl, honey. No, I don't think so. Sandy put as much eager into her voice as she could, a little bit of airheadedness, too. Let me think. It was March, maybe. She flashed a proud smile. Yeah, that's it, March. March at the university. You know, when the guy from Intensity America was there talking? You mean Identity America, Juan said, a little more interested now, but still suspicious. You were there? I don't remember you. Oh yeah, I was standing there, like right near you. The blonde's brows came down. Geez, there were an awful lot of people there, and everybody was yelling and shouting. She laughed. That was something, though, wasn't it? Amazing. Sandy smiled like she was used to being overlooked, while mentally bringing up the crowd shot she'd been shown at the briefing with the blonde standing by the stage. Yeah, I guess that's why you don't remember me. I was with some other people. Tall, skinny guy wearing a cowboy hat. The blonde snapped her fingers. I remember him. Oh, yeah, you too. That was a cool demonstration, huh? Totally. Do you go there to school, I mean? The blonde snorted. Not hardly. A friend, my boyfriend, she added, lowering her voice like she was exposing a big, a big secret. He knew the speaker, you know. The guy on the stage, that's why we were there. Sandy leaned closer as if sharing the same secret. No kidding. Wow. So you're like part of their, what do you call it? Organization, the blonde said. Sandy smiled wildly. Widely. Yeah, that. Well, the blonde straightened up a little bit, almost preemie. Yeah, I guess you could say that. Sandy moved down the bar carrying her drink. Now they were shoulder to shoulder. The bartender had passed the blonde a beer and moved off. That is so cool. Is there like, you know, someplace I can join? I'd love to, you know, do something to help out. They're so, she looked around and lowered her voice. Right, you know, 
their, what do you call it, message or whatever about the people who really matter and the ones who don't. Sandy figured she'd laid it on enough and backed off a little bit, waiting for the blonde to pick up the tune. I know, huh, the blonde said, looking around the room. You know, my boyfriend, he's really tight with the important people. No shit, Sandy whispered. I bet that's like hot. The blonde rolled her eyes. <coughs> yeah, you'd think so, huh? But it's all I can do to talk him into getting him up, getting it up. He's always so busy making plans. Guys, Sandy laughed. And they say we're the ones that are always holding out. Hey, the blonde said, holding out her hand. I'm Trish. Sandy took the bony hand, bedecked with a couple of cheap silver rings with turquoise stones, and shook it, keeping her fingers limp and loose, a girly handshake. I'm L, you know, like the letter. Fish <laughs> Yeah, cool name. Say, you want to get a table? Yeah, Sandy said, with satisfaction almost as good as sex. That would be awesome. <laughs> really big book. It's not just a long book, but it's a big book. It's, there's a big canvas. It takes place in multiple places simultaneously. So there are, there's an intrigue plot, there's a romance plot, there's actually a political plot that speaks a little bit about what's happening in the world. Mm -hmm. um, and you move back and forth from place to place, although you don't move back and forth in time, which I don't generally like to do. And that's, that's just another layer that's really hard to control. Um, but because I've got a setting in Philadelphia and I've got a setting in Washington and everything's moving around, it was really hard to write. The, the new characters were the easiest to write because new characters are easy to write in the sense that, you know, you basically just create character the way you, you always create character. Um, and the romance threaded through is a pretty standard romance. They have, a, I hope, a fairly decent conflict. Um, their, their two goals are at odds, although they're both working towards the same end, which is to get the president reelected. But one is a Secret Service agent whose job is to keep the president safe, and the other is his campaign manager, whose goal is to give him as much public exposure as possible. Mm -hmm. So from the very beginning, that yeah. puts them at odds, you know, philosophically. Mm -hmm. So um, that's the romance. And then, because I have an intrigue plot and I was going to have the convention in Philadelphia, it's like, well, I don't have to write a whole bunch of new yeah. cops. I've got a whole series of cops <laughs> in Philadelphia. <laughs> so I crossed over to the Justice series. Um, and writing the Justice series characters was the most fun. Because mm -hmm. I haven't written them for a while. Yeah. Uh -huh. um, and I really love the dynamics of their group. Yeah. And the characters are very diverse. They're far more prominent in the, the Justice series is really an ensemble series. Whereas the Honor series, you know, most people read it because they want to read Cam and Blair, um, and they're the they're the connector. Mm -hmm. Whereas in the Justice series, all of the characters fairly have mostly the same weight. Mm -hmm. So I was really happy to revisit them, and I ended up making Sandy, who's one of my favorite characters in that series. I needed someone that could actually realistically infiltrate. A domestic terrorism cell, and that's going to be somebody who's experienced undercover. And Sandy really is the hero of this story, um, even though she doesn't predominate in the book. All the other characters are there, Cam and Blair are there, and the president's there, and lots of stuff happens. But it turned out to be really fun. When I sat down to write it, you know, the things that interest me in that series, as I mentioned the other day in my reading, which everybody probably wasn't there, is. The theme of domestic terrorism is really, I think, um, a potent one, and one that everyone thinks about. I mean, and, it, and it's what we read every day in the newspaper mm -hmm. and you know, what we see on the internet. And it seemed to me that it's something, I think that what we write is a reflection of where we live and how we live, and hopefully how we would like to live. So I'm interested in that, and it worked for this book. Mm -hmm.